Welcome to pre-calculus video for skill number 31. I can model with linear equations and inequalities. And the trivia question for this video is, here we are back with our pair of booths, and in the last video we learned what lugs were. At the front of some special boots, there is a groove cut out the of the front of the sole. And the trivia question is, what is the purpose of that groove? All right, so for this skill, we're going to focus a lot on slope and the slope-intercept form because these two things will tell us a lot about what's going on with a linear model. Slope is sometimes referred to as the average rate of change. The equation for it isn't any different, though. The average rate of change is your change in y values over your change in x values. Some people might equate this to saying your rise over your run. So the important thing is usually when we're modeling these these values have meanings behind them. You know, maybe it's maybe it's like change in miles over change in time. So you have like miles per hour. Um, or maybe you have number of people per year. There's context to this idea of average rate of change. The slope-intercept form is the y equals mx plus b, and a lot of times what's going on here with slope-intercept form is you have your change, your average rate of change, which is multiplied by the number of units that we're talking about, and then this b value oftentimes is like your start point, so maybe what we're talking about within context is this is your population in the year 2000, and then for every year that passes, we grow by this many people. Um, so this form is really nice because it gives us our start condition for a model. Down here I've listed a problem-solving strategy. I kind of uh, work through this uh, process in a... In, in the problems, but I don't follow these steps exactly. I pulled this from our textbook. What is important is that we learn to identify changing quantities. So that's going to be our x's and our y's. Or maybe we use the variable t for time. Um, we want to be able to identify what's important within the problem. Uh, I'm generally pretty kind in the fact that I strip a problem down to only important pieces of information but we need to also look at what is that information in relation to our slope in the problem and our initial value. Uh, what is the context? So in the end, we're eventually trying to find something out. So what is it that we're trying to find out? And an overlooked step often is to reflect on whether your answer is reasonable. A lot of times people will make a mistake and they'll come up with something that doesn't make any sense like negative 25 people or, or uh, it took me negative hours to drive a certain distance. And then finally the last piece is we want to make sure that we put units on all solutions that have units. Alright, so let's take a look at example one. It says Emily is saving up or she has saved up $3,500 for her visit to Seattle. She anticipates spending $400 a week on rent, food, and fun. Find and interpret the horizontal intercept. Find and interpret the horizontal intercept and determine a reasonable domain and range for this function. So if we kind of laid out a table, what we have here is she starts out with $3,500 at time zero, and then each week she's spending $400. So after week one, she's down to $3,100. After week two, she's down to $2,700, etc. And we see that each week we are losing $400. Um, if we were to visualize this as a graph, we start at 3500 and then for each week that we go over, we are going to lose 400 in height. So what's happening is 
eventually we'll hit this point. You know, maybe it's one, two, three, four, five, some distance out here uh, where we cross. And that actually is getting at finding and interpreting the horizontal intercept. So what exactly does that mean within the context of this problem? If this is, if this changing value is our amount of money, so then, and this changing value is our time that has transpired, what's happening at this point is we have run out of money. So finding that value and interpreting it, um, we're finding when does she run out of money? So I'm going to use these two points here because we kind of created that to find our slope. So we want to create an equation for this line and we need to find our slope. So our slope is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and we find we have a slope of negative 400. So for every unit of time that transpires, we lose $400. We started with $3,500. So here, this B value is our start point, our y-intercept the height of the line there. So we're trying to find out where is it equal to zero. So we're asking ourselves at what t would this be equal to zero? And we can add 400t to both sides and we're solving for t. t is 3500 divided by 400 and we get a t that is somewhere between uh, 8 and 9 so between 8 and 9 8.75 I believe so what this means is after 8.75 weeks and we should write this out as an answer as a, an answer as a full sentence after 8.75 weeks, Emily runs out of money. So that's our interpretation of the horizontal intercept. It occurs at 8.75 weeks, a zero dollar amount is left. The second part of the problem says find a reasonable domain and range. So our domain is input. So a reasonable input would be our number of weeks. So after zero weeks, one week, two weeks. So reasonable domain we can say is, you know, that time is greater than or equal to zero weeks. Uh, we could keep going on forever, but it, kind of when it makes sense to go out endlessly. When we want to find a reasonable range, then what we're talking about is her money. And a reasonable range, well, she starts out at $3,500, and so her the total amount of money she has is going to be less than or equal to $3,500. Example two, Jamal is choosing between two moving companies. The first, U-Haul, charges an, an upfront fee of $20 and then 59 cents a mile. The second charges an upfront fee of $16 and then 63 cents a mile. When will U-Haul be the better choice for Jamal? So what we have here is our, our input, I suppose you could say our input is the miles driven and then the output 
the output is the cost to Jamal and this is going to change um, well the input and the output is going to be the same whether he chooses U-Haul or budget but the total amount he pays is going to vary based on which one he picks so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up two different scenarios the first one is going to be the U-Haul charge and the second one will be the budget charge U-Haul we pay twenty dollars up front and then we're going to also pay fifty nine cents a mile so I'm gonna use uh, let's stick with X fifty nine cents a mile so this is our U-Haul equation input the number of miles driven times fifty nine cents add twenty cents or twenty dollars and that will be his total cost the total cost for budget he pays sixteen dollars up front and he adds to that sixty three cents a mile so right off the bat if he chooses u-haul and drives one mile he's gonna pay more than if he chooses budget and drives one mile. I should put an X there. So what we have is U-Haul is more expensive, but because the per mile charge is less, there probably comes a time where U-Haul is going to cost less. If you think about this graphically, what you have is U-Haul starts at $20, and it increases at some rate whereas budget starts at a lower value but increases at a faster rate so at some point some point in time some some number of miles driven it's going to be more expensive to drive the budget one So we want to find out at what point is it more expensive. So if these two equations represent cost, the point where they are equal to one another will be the point where it transitions from one to the other. So let's set these two equations equal to one another. We'll say 20 plus 0.59x is equal to 16 plus 0.63x. And if we're solving this for x, I'll subtract 16 from both sides, and then I'll subtract 0.59x from both sides. And then I solve for x by dividing by 0.04. get an answer of 100 equals x. So that means at 100 miles the two companies are going to cost the same. And we could actually check that out if we wanted to. We could say what is 29 plus 0.59 times 100? And we would get an answer of 79. Or if I did what is 16 plus 0.63 times 100 and to that I also get 79 so at 100 miles they cost 79 for both companies which means if he's going to be driving less than 100 miles he should choose budget but if he's going to be driving more than 100 miles he should choose U-Haul because it's cheaper overall for him to use U-Haul. So we look back at what the question was asking. It says, when will U-Haul be the better choice for Jamal? And we discovered if he's driving more than 100 miles. So if Jamal is covering more than 100 miles or driving 100 plus miles, U-Haul is a better deal.
what? I got a fever. And the only prescription is small cowbell. The town's population has been growing linearly. In 2004, the population was 6,200. By 2009, it had grown to 8,100. So, what we have here is in 2004, the population was 6,200. Uh, 2004 is a big number. Maybe it'd be easier if we just referenced it from the year 2000. So we're going to say when t is 0, that means the year 2000. So then what we actually have is a point at 4, 6200 and another point at 9, 8,100. We can create a linear model from two points. You guys remember the point-slope form? We can do that with these two points. So our slope we need to find is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and this is equal to 1900 divided by 5 which is the same as 380 so what's happening is each year the population is growing by 380 people. That's our slope. We can use one of our points in our point slope form. So what we now have is y minus 6200 is equal to 380 times x minus 4. And if we solve this for y, we're going to get y minus 6200 is equal to 380x minus 380 times 4 is 1520. Which gives us a final equation of y is 380x and then negative 1520 plus the 6200 is equal to 4680 so we now have a model a linear model that if we put in a number for the number of years after 2000 it should produce a result that tells us our population. So part A is asking us to predict the population in 2013. I'm going to shrink this down so we can see it all. So if we want to predict the population in 2013, what we want to do is put in 13 for our x value. And this should give us our population in 2013. So 380 times 13 plus 4680 is 9,620. So in the year 2013, we have 9,620 people. And then Part B wants to know when will the population reach 15,000? So Part B is saying... 15,000 happens in what year? So now we're, we have our y value and we need to solve for x. So we can go through the process of solving for x. 
15,000 minus the 4680 gives us 10,320 is equal to 380x. And then we divide the 380 on both sides. And we get approximately 27 and a half years, uh, 27.2 years after 2000. So in the year 2027, maybe February or March of 2027. All right, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you have a better ability to model now with linear equations. And the answer to the trivia question, the groove at the front of the boot is used to attach crampons. And what are crampons? They're these little metal spikes that are worn on the soles of the shoes to make it easier to walk on snow and ice.